Hey guys, Tyler here. The Tellarites are a warp-capable humanoid species in the Star Trek universe. Hailing from the planet Teller Prime in the Alpha Quadrant, Tellarites have been featured in nearly every Trek series and multiple feature films. They are pig-like in appearance and have a distinctively argumentative culture. Despite Tellarite's somewhat antagonistic approach to dealing with other species and with each other, Teller Prime is a core member of the United Federation of Planets. In fact, one of the Federation's founding members in 2161. In today's video, I'll examine the Tellarite's biology, history, culture, and technology, and compare them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. Before we go any further, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Fume. Listen, cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a lot better way to break your bad habits. And we're not talking about some weird voodoo from your crazy neighbor. Fume looks at the problem in a different way. Instead of drastic, uncomfortable changes, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device built to do just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural and uses flavored air instead of vapor, with no harmful chemicals. Fume makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Their best-selling flavors like crisp mint feel very fresh, and the device is beautifully shaped, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Not to mention how great the real wood texture looks. It makes you feel cool using it. We often put off stopping something because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and fun. They've served over 150,000 customers and have thousands of success stories. There's no reason you can't be part of that. Join Fume today by picking up the Journey Pack. Head to tryfume.com slash orange river or scan the QR code and use code orange river to get 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Fume Solano launched last November. You can upgrade your Journey Pack to the Solano and enjoy the premium walnut barrel and onyx black coated mouthpiece with a smoother finish and still get 10% off. And right now, Fume is running a double the cores offer where you'll receive double the amount of cores packets you order to help with your New Year's resolution. That's tryfum.com and code Orange River to get an additional 10% off your order today. Now, back to the video. Before we jump straight into Tellarite biology, let's at first take a closer look at Teller Prime itself. The planet is an Earth-like M-class world that orbits the binary star 61 Cygni, a real star system located roughly 11 light years from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus. Both 61 Cygni A and 61 Cygni B are K-type orange stars, slightly smaller and cooler than our Sun, and the system happens to be about 6.1 billion years old. According to Star Trek star charts and stellar cartography, the Starfleet Reference Library, Teller Prime orbits 61 Cygni A, presumably in the habitable zone between 0.26 and 0.58 astronomical units. This is the region around the star where liquid water could be present on an Earth-like planet according to 21st century human astronomy. The Tellarites first appeared in the original series episode Journey to Babel, written by DC Fontana. While she initially conceived of Teller Prime as a savagely cold planet to account for Tellarite's extensive fur, Tellarite's only canon depiction in the Enterprise episode Babel 1 shows a more geographically diverse planet. At least one portion of its surface is seemingly temperate, and we see at least one open body of water among what appears to be green vegetation. Given Teller Prime orbits a K-type star, one should also expect vegetation that's browner in color as well, since such pigments would absorb the longer, redder wavelengths of 61 Cygni's starlight. As Teller Prime would have already been geologically stable and presumably had ocean water on its surface, it would have been a prime target for the ancient humanoids to seed their genetic code four and a half billion years ago, possibly making use of the mycelial network. The mycelial network 
like mycelial a network. As we learn in the Next Generation episode, The Chase, it's this DNA sequence that these aliens, also known as the progenitors, deposited on presumably millions of M-class worlds to guide the evolution of life towards a form similar to their own. The Tellarites would have thus been subject to the twin evolutionary pressures of their environment and the progenitors programmed DNA sequence. As for the unique attributes this porcine species developed, well, there's a lot to unpack. Tellarites are fairly stout as humanoid aliens go, with an average height slightly shorter than humans, though some individuals could be taller. This could be indicative of a slightly higher surface gravity on Teller Prime. Tellarites have distinctive snouts, and in some appearances, their hands are somewhat hoof-like in appearance. Both men and women often wear beards, and their lower jaw usually possesses a pair of small tusks. These tusks are more prominent in some Tellarites than others. Tellarites find human room temperatures to be cold, indicative of a higher body temperature Tellarite blood is purple as it contains the protein hemerythrin, present in some marine species on Earth. Hemerythrin is about one-fourth as efficient as hemoglobin at oxygen transport. According to a production note for Journey to Babel, Tellarites do not get drunk, they just get feisty. The makeup for their original appearance was literally designed overnight by Fred Phillips, who was given virtually no notice that he'd be required to do so. The face mainly consisted of a one-piece prosthetic appliance made from latex. The way in which it was glued to the actor meant his eyes could not be seen, forcing the actor to tilt his head back when delivering his lines so as to be able to see through the mask. A beard and mustache were then manually applied and intended to blend into the actor's own hair. The mustache helped hide the edge of the snout and complemented the character's bushy eyebrows. The look was completed with gloves that represented Tellarite hands. This makeup was slightly revised for their appearance in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home and Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country to look less rubber masky. Makeup supervisor on the later shows, Michael Westmore, had wanted to create an updated version of the Tellarite makeup since 1998, which he expected would be practical. Westmore finally got a chance to do so with Enterprise, with the first new Tellarite character in decades appearing on screen in the season 2 episode Bounty in 2003. The Tellarite's eyes were now less deeply sunk, and they had a modified snout and improved hair. One makeup element that was removed, however, were the three-fingered hands. Tellarites are known to be a very impatient people and for their stubborn pride. They have a propensity towards strong emotion and a foil to the Vulcans. They enjoy a good argument, and arguing is even considered a sport on Teller. Tellarites often begin social interactions with a series of complaints. If they have nothing to complain about, they turn to insults. Because of their ability to argue, Tellarites make excellent politicians. The Tellarite diet is rather diverse and, well, off-putting. For while their cuisine includes raw fruits and vegetables, canines are also considered something of a delicacy. Tellarites also sometimes enjoy mud baths, a well-rounded people. The Tellarites became warp capable and involved in interstellar communication by the mid-20th century. It was a Tellarite freighter that picked up the distress call of a Vulcan ship that crash-landed near Carbon Creek, Pennsylvania in 1957. They passed this information on to the Vulcan High Command. Sometime before 2154, Teller was in conflict with the Andorian Empire, and Tellarites often repelled Andorians back to their own territory by force. The Vulcans generally consider Tellarites to be trustworthy, though even as of the 2150s, some Tellarites are still involved in dubious business. This includes unscrupulous merchants, bounty hunters, and slavers, among other things. In spite of all of this, in 2155, the Tellarites ally with United Earth, Vulcan, and the Andorian Empire to form the Coalition of Planets, a defensive pact against the Romulan Star Empire. The Coalition of Planets serves, of course, 
as a precursor to the Federation. As Teller is one of the founding members of the Federation, by the 23rd century, we see numerous Tellerites serve as Starfleet officers and as high-ranking admirals. Even this far in the future, however, some Tellerites prefer to follow more venturesome careers, including still working as bounty hunters. Tellerite leaders are sometimes known to cause conflict in Federation proceedings, such as fighting the admission of Corridon in 2268 due to the presence of illegal mining operations on the planet. Indeed, even as far back as 2155, the Corridonites had blocked a Tellerite proposal to embargo the Orion Syndicate. Corridon is ultimately admitted to the Federation. Regardless of the Tellerite's propensity for conflict, it's just part of their culture. They really do form part of the backbone of the Federation, being one of its core worlds. Various reference materials and non-canon sources place heavy emphasis on Teller Prime's role as an economic and engineering powerhouse. Shit, they even have a space elevator in Star Trek Online. Pretty cool. Even as late as the 31st and 32nd centuries, Teller Prime remains part of the Federation, even as other founding members, including Earth, leave following the burn. At least one Tellarite serves as part of the United Earth Defense Force personnel, and another is one of the first class of Starfleet Academy cadets when it reopens in 3190. Due to the burn, however, an unknown number of Tellarites have become stranded outside Federation space and suffer from Emerald Chain raiding parties. One group is known, though, to operate the Tellarite Exchange within Emerald Chain territory. By now, it should be clear why the Tellarite's major contributions, from science and technology to Starfleet officers and public servants, make them one of the more prominent species in Federation affairs. So, would you recruit a Tellarite to serve on your crew? Maybe even have one design and build something to meet your futuristic needs? Why or why not? Let me know down below. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash orange river, link in the description, or become a YouTube member by clicking the join button on my channel page. I want to give a quick shout out to my donors who allow me to bring on talent like editors to help make more high quality content for you to enjoy. By becoming a patron or member, you also get access to awesome perks like behind the scenes photos and videos, patron and member only polls, name in the credits, merch discounts, and more or you can drop a one-time super thanks or PayPal donation, all are appreciated. Links to my PayPal as well as my social media and merch store are in the description too. That's all I have for this week. Live long and prosper.